Hi everyone and welcome to part two of the colour along from the Colouring Heaven Fairy Tale Special which are the designs by Hannah Lynn. We started on Tinkerbell which is on image 21 from Peter Pan. In part one we have started by doing her skin and her eyes. We've used Touch 5 markers and Prismacolor pencils. So for part two we're going to be doing her hair and her dress. This might be broken up into four parts because there's still the wings, the thimble and the background to do. So we're going to start with her hair. I'm going to be doing a touch five marker base of number 134 which is raw silk. I'm going to be going over the entire area with the marker and I'm going to be adding all the pencil shading with Prismacolor pencils. So you're going to use all of the hair with raw silk just as a base marker. This was the palest shade of like a yellow tone that I could find in the Touch Fives. This isn't from the 80 count, this is from a separate count that I had bought, which was a skin tone set. Now, it's not really a skin tone colour, but it's like a very pale yellow on lay down, which is perfect for hair. So although you can't use this really for skins, you can use this for blonde hair, which is really, really good. So you're going to go over all of the hair with the marker to start. You don't have to use Touch 5, you can try and match your palest marker in any kind of pale eggshell or creamy colour that you can find because your pencils are going to be doing the majority of the work. So this is just for a base. So don't worry too much if you can't match the exact colour, you find in your collection what you can match. These were really inexpensive for those who want to know. They were around the £10 mark with shipping from eBay. They are the skin tone set of Touch 5 markers. You can also find them on Amazon. And they are really, really good to use. So we have covered the entire base area. Now I'm going to get my next few colours. So I'm going to be starting off with the Canary Yellow in PC916. I'm going to go to this side first because it's dry. And I'm going to be going from each edge to the middle. And as I come to the middle, I'm lessening my pressure onto my page. So I'm going heavier pressure on the outer part and lessening my pressure of the pencil as I'm coming into the middle. This is just to start. I might zoom you in a little so you can see better. So this is just the first. We're going to be using two yellows and then we're going to be adding some wisps in with some black or you can use sepia, but I personally used to like black because it just adds the effect and it's just really nice. So. I'm doing repeating that pressure throughout her whole hair here. We're just getting where we, we're sort of picking out where we want to go with our colours. So this doesn't have to be neat to start with because you are just picking out where you want your lighter parts and dark parts in her hair to be because this is just your base colour. Being that she's Tinkerbell, to me she has to have quite a yellowed hair so I'm gonna add some darker shades in but not a heavy amount I'm going over all of her hair with the canary yellow I'm 
leaving a highlight in the middle. Same with these parts, I'm going to come from each edge and meet in the middle. These parts are a lot smaller so you might not have as much of a highlight but you're going to try and get a little bit in there. And then we're going to bring the same aspect up into these parts here. And then we're going to start adding our other colours in. We just need a bit of a yellowed look because she is Tinkerbell <laughs> and she has got really yellow blonde hair in the movie, hasn't she? I'm going to try and keep it quite true to her colours. So we've got a base going. Now I'm going to start to bring in a couple of more colours. We're only going to add two more in and then a black. My next colour is going to be a yellow ochre in PC942. And I'm going to go fairly heavy with my pressure to bring that into the middle. So I'm pressing the pencil quite reasonably hard on this part. And I'm going to meet in the middle like I have been doing with my canary yellow. So for those of you who have joined me on part one and have done them, I am so happy that you have, so thank you very much. I've seen a lovely, lovely version. Starting to bring a bit of colour into her. I'm going all the way around the hair doing that with the yellow ochre. So remember in the middles, you're going to kind of leave a highlight, so when you come towards the middle, feather the colour out and lessen the pressure of your pencil onto the paper. So you're pressing hard to pressing light. And that's how to get a highlight, just press from a kind of heavier and as you're coming into the middle just lessen your pressure on the page but you're still putting some colour down. You don't want to completely come off. You're kind of just feathering out the colour into the middle. Hair, in my opinion, is one of those things that the more layers of colours that you can do, you can start to add effects into how your hair colour is going to come out on the paper. I do do a tutorial on how to do realistic hair which is very hard to do these on the Hannah Lynn pictures. So you can add some small strokes in, but you're not going to be able to do the most realistic hair on these pictures. <laughs> so we're going to go for what we can do on here, but still make it look quite realistic. So in the middle, you're just going to leave that highlight. Mm -hmm. 
and here too. And straight down into these parts here. Now I'm going to bring in a slight brown and it's going to be a light brown. I'm just sharpening my pencil. Now I'm going to bring in the colour Burnt Ochre in PC943 and I don't want to overload her hair with this but I do want to give some depth now to her hair because this will be the final colour before you're going to start putting your little black lines and wisps in. You don't want to go too heavy with this. I'm pressing quite lightly on the page and as I come to the middle I'm even lighter. So this isn't requiring a lot of pressure on this one because it's just giving a little bit of colour but without saturating it with brown because we want to keep her quite blonde. So I'm not doing too much of this colour in particular. So you're doing a light pressure on all of this guys. If you press too hard you might lose all your blonde and if you're going for that look you can but if you want to keep her quite blonde I wouldn't do too much with the middle I'm not gonna I'm gonna bring some lines in so I'm not gonna bring the effect that I was doing over here I'm gonna actually put some wispy lines you need to ensure you have a sharp pencil because it won't work if you don't. If you bring those lines up in short, sharp wisps, you will get the lines, but you're not gonna oversaturate the color with the brown ochre, or burnt ochre, sorry. but you've got a little bit of an effect in there as well. Now with these, you can't really do it as effectively because they're a lot smaller. So with these little parts here, I will carry on with just the light pressure on the pencil and bringing it into my highlight. going to get a very sharp black Prisma in PC935 and this is optional guys but I just bring like a wisp I just like the effect that the wisps have you can have it come down and across and you bring in just some of the wisps you can overlap a few and she's got a little bit of like a wispy thing going on you can also do it here as well just a few okay and that's her hair done. I'm going to leave the flowers for now because we're going to come back up to those after. Now we're going to move on to her dress down here. With her dress, I'm going to do a Touch 5 marker base of the colour Green Bice in 163. I'm going to use the bullet end, not the broad end. And I'm going to cover the leaves on her dress.
And the same with these leaves here. I'm going to do these in a different colour green. as well. So it's all of these ones with the veins in them that we're going to do with the green bice touch 5 marker base or alternatively if you don't have the touch 5 markers the lightest green that you have it's like a pastel green or you can use a pencil in a pastel green as your base as well it's entirely up to you. Make sure you cover the entire leaf. Okay, so we're going to start with these leaves here. I'm going to go for my lightest green, which will be apple green in PC912. I'm going to go for the bottom part upwards. And I'm going fairly like a medium to hard pressure at the bottom. And as you come up here, you're going to feather your colour out. And it's the same applying with this one. It's going up hard to medium to light. And the same applies at the bottom on this one. We're going to come back to the apple green in a moment to shade and blend in. Now I'm going to get the colour kelp green in PC1090. And from the bottom... I'm going to start laying down where I want the colour to go. I'm going quite hard here. And upwards, we're putting a medium pressure at the right as we're coming up. Covering that entire part there. As we come here, you're going from a medium pressure on your pencil to practically nothing. And then that little bit there. Same here, we're going to go hard to medium to light. And the same applies on this last one. And we're going to repeat this pattern with the leaves that we have just put the Touch 5 marker base down on. I'm going to go a bit darker on the other ones. Now we're going to bring back our apple green. And just to blend out the top, we're going to lay that on top of what we've just done, only at the tops of the leaves. Now we're going to do the exact same on these leaves here. We're still with our apple green. We're going to cover all of these leaves with the apple green. And we're going from a harder pressure to a medium to fading out into a next to nothing. And you repeat that throughout the entire skirt of leaves here. Okay. 
we're just laying down where we want our colours guys I'm going to continue throughout this one and the two top ones there as well. Now with our kelp green again, which is PC1090, we're going to come back over to every individual leaf. We're going to go quite heavy with our pressure here and repeat the same as what we did up towards her top. Last no, three. <laughs> so I've been quiet then. I was concentrating. <laughs>
you bear with me? Okay, I'm just grabbing an eraser because you wouldn't have done this part. I have gone just slightly into that there. Okay. And then with the apple green, I'm just going to blend out those edges. zoom out for you a moment so you can see what it looks like all together now I'm going <clears throat> now I'm going to get the color dark green in PC 908 and just into the very corners I'm going to put a little bit of depth into the leaves so it is into the corners only and feathering out as you come outwards with your pencil in all of the corners just onto sort of one side of the leaf okay and I think I'm quite happy with how that looks I'm going to do the same on her glove so I'm going to do the touch 5 marker base in green vice number 163 exactly as we've done with the leaves And we're going to repeat that. So I'm going to zoom in again. So we're grabbing apple green in PC912. And I'm going to go along the edge. So we're not going over the entire glove. We are going sort of around the edge and fading out. Then again, I'm going to get back my kelp green in PC1090 and we're going to go like we did with the apple green and fade down. And again with the dark green in PC908. Then I get the apple green back into this and we're just going to blend that out where your pencil line would be. And I'm going to do her little flower in just like black, like a little black button. I think that's quite effective. Now we need to think about what we're going to do with this, what we call complement here. And I'm thinking a dark green would go best. So I'm thinking along the lines of like a, an olive green maybe, or we could go for something entirely different and go for like a, like a rose bay. 
Spanish movie. That would go really well. So I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to get the colour 97 in rose beige. And I'm going to base down... over all of these leaf, flowery leaves here, but I'm going to do them like autumn leaves, I think. So, as you probably know, I have a budgie, and she will make noise. <laughs> We're going over all of that. Every other one on here. So we're keeping with the rosy beige. So this is quite fiddly this bit, so just go slowly. Okay, I'm quite liking that colour. On the other stripes, I'm going to go down with the green bice in 163 and I'm going to do the alternating stripes with the green. up to these here and we're going to choose our colours which we would like. So I think I'm going to go for some Tuscan Red and some Burnt Ochre. So with these I'm now going to go with Burnt Ochre in PC943. I'm going to come down each petal you won't see this hugely at the moment. I'm pressing like a medium pressure to start with. So we're going over the entire and fading out, so the entire top of it and fading out to the bottom. 
Now I'm going to bring in the colour Tuscan Red in PC 937 and I'm going to pick out where I want that to go. And we're going to bring that down. And fade that out. So medium pressure to light to super light. And if we go over all of that, we won't lose the base. It's still there. And it aids and guides us, which is really good. And that's why I do them on the Hannah Lynn pictures, because you've got something to work with. Now I'm going to pick back up my burnt ochre and I'm just going to blend out those edges. same colours on the tights but I'm not going to do the burnt ochre first I'm going to do the Tuscan red first in PC 937 and I'm only going to come halfway with my shading and I'm going to repeat that on all of the stripes So just to the middle. And the same with this leg just to the middle and then with my green sections I'm going to pick up the colour Kelp Green in PC1090 like we used on our leaves and I'm going to repeat that same pattern out into the edge. So. tights to me are done we don't need to do a huge amount on the tights with this section here in particular it reminds me of white lace so I'm going to color it like it's white lace I highly recommend a Posca white pen for this I have the 
thin nib. Make sure I get it going this time. And then with the lines, I'm going to sort of like white out the black lines and fill in the white so it looks like white lace. So this bit you got to be a bit careful with so that you don't white out the wrong lines. You can kind of do like a, that's it. You just go over the lines with it. So it looks like lace. And then with the tights, just to make a highlight, I'm just going to add just around. Okay. So that is part two. Oh, no, we're going to add, I'm just going to add a little dot in the middle. <laughs> that is part two. So we have more or less done our dress. We're going to come back and do this after uh, because I've not decided if I want to make that into lace or because it's like a petticoat underneath not decided on that yet so the next part part three will be her wings the little jar the flowers we'll try and do um the petticoat and then part four will be the thimble and the background so i hope you enjoyed today's part that is part two. I will be back for part three with the things that I've just explained. So part three will be the wings, the bottle, the flowers in the hair and the little petticoat. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on part three. Take care guys. Bye.